Ahoy mateys, Firebrand X here with a video tutorial on Sega Genesis and Master System optimal timings for the OSSC and to talk about a few other projects as well. Uh, in this video I've got a new lapel mic from Fifine that I'll be using and this will make it easier on me and that I don't have to worry about keeping my mouth within earshot of the desktop microphone. Uh, obviously the sound quality will be different so let me know in the comments if this is a bother and I'll switch back to the desktop mic on the next video. Also wanted to mention I now have a Patreon page and every donation is extremely appreciated. Uh, the past two years I spent close to twenty thousand dollars on uh, gaming equipment just so I can cover as much profiling as I can for both the FrameMeister and the OSSC. And in fact I just sort of went broke this month buying the Super Graphics and SSD S3 combo just so I can do full coverage of every game scenario under uh, the PC Engine brand of games. Uh, the, irony, the irony of this being I literally have no time to actually enjoy playing any of, the, of these games uh, for all these systems because I'm either spending hours obsessively tweaking profile settings for the FM or the OSSC or I'm spending most of the day working on my audio mod board designs uh, in Eagle. Uh, to be honest, I felt kind of embarrassed setting up a Patreon since I had for the longest time been donati donating all of my money and resources for free up to this point. But I am running into an issue where I can't afford buying everything that comes out, you know, to keep people informed on the best possible audio and video they can get from their favorite consoles. Uh, and in this regard, the Patreon is going to be greatly appreciated and helping hand as it hopefully continues to grow to a point where I can you know make better quality videos as well as get my own designs researched and developed quicker. Uh, not only do I not make a profit on any of this but as I mentioned I actually spend quite a lot of my own money trying to keep up so every dollar that comes in from the Patreon is going right back into this passion I have for you know squeezing the best out of these old consoles. So again, huge thanks to all those who have pledged to my Patreon page, and the link to it will be provided in the description below this video. Speaking of research and uh, audio modboard designs, this video will also feature the sound output uh, using my uh, prototype line level stereo output modboard for the Model 1 Genesis slash Master System. Uh, I know you've often heard that the Model 1 Genesis consoles are supposed to have the best onboard stock audio as it is. And while this is true, it isn't exactly perfect and can be made to sound even better. Currently, the headphone jack is used to hook up the to stereo receivers and AV capture devices. But keep in mind, the headphone jack uses caps and resistors designed to drive headphone speakers. And as such, the quality comes out different when you pass it into line level jacks. With that said, I spent the past month working on a line level amp mod that will give crystal clear sound for these original Model 1 Genesis consoles. And I have to give a huge shout out to uh, Steve Kulov of HD Retrovision for his guidance and answering all of my incessant questions, as well as to Ace on the Sega 16 forums for also offering his own expertise and advice. Uh, with that said, I'm going to turn down uh, the volume of my mic, actually mute myself, and turn up the volume of this game here, uh, Streets of Rage 2, and play the first level just to give you an idea of both uh, my optimal timing profile as well as how my line level audio output board sounds. And then after that we'll jump right into optimal timings for uh, each of these modes of the Genesis. So with that said, let me raise the... let me go ahead and actually get it to the player select screen and I'm going to go ahead and mute myself and turn up the volume of the actual console.
All right, hopefully that was a good demonstration of optimal timing as well as the uh, line level stereo amp board. Uh, obviously being a YouTube video, it's not gonna be like the perfect demonstration and I have actually made flag file comparisons that I've posted on uh, Twitter. So uh, if you're interested, you can follow my Twitter and, and find out more about the uh, line level amp board. Also my apologies for the uh, air conditioner being on and my microphone picked that up earlier. Um, so at any rate, let's go ahead and load up a generic profile and get this guy set to optimal timing just so you could see how it was done. And I have uh, profile number four as a generic 4.3. There we go. <clears throat> All right, and actually you can see garbage down there on the bottom, and we're actually going to mask that out using the post-processing pixel mask. Uh, and uh, I prefer to do that now because it keeps everything in a nice integer scale based on 240 rather than 224. So that's how I like to do things now. Uh, let me just check something real quick to make sure my microphone is working. It looks like it is, so that's good. And we're going to reset the Genesis. And you'll see here that I actually have my EverDrive uh, X7 flashcard. I have sorted the games by the resolution they use, you know, predominantly during main gameplay. Now I say main gameplay because a lot of these games like to switch to 256 mode for various subscreens menu options, title screens, and so on. So when you use optimal timing, you'll see the switch to the lower resolution causes, you know, pixels to look misshapen or out of phase. And then it will fix itself uh, when it switches back to main gameplay and 320 horizontal res mode. Conversely, the uh, game sorted in 256 mode uh, will do the same thing, only in the opposite direction, where they use 256 for main gameplay and sometimes they will randomly switch to 320 for title screens or menu options. Uh, I've provided in the video description a text file that lists which games are primarily 256 mode main gameplay. So if you want to sort your own Genesis ROMs in similar fashion, you can use that text list to refer to. Uh, with all that being said, if you find this all to be too much of a headache, and you're not worried about having the sharpest and cleanest pixels, you can simply leave your Linux mode on generic instead of optimally timed, and uh, that way you won't have to worry about the res mode switching between 256 and uh, 320. For me, though, it's a real treat to see these games in pristine, perfect pixel glory, so of course I had to sort my ROMs according to resolution. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and load up an actual 240p test suite here. And we're in the line 4x mode generic. So we're going to, first thing we're going to do is go to video in processing, LPF 9 megahertz is what we want. And I like to turn the RGB gain up to 40. So I'll do that for each of these. All right, and that's good for uh, video processing. And uh, next we'll go to sync options. Make sure that's at max and we'll just leave that at that. We're going to go to Output Options, and you see I've already selected Line 4X, so we'll go to Line 4X mode. And we're going to change that to 320 by 240 optimal. Then we're going to back out and go to Sampling Options. And go to Advanced Timing for 320 by 240 and we'll change the sample rate to 427. Now the quirky thing about 320 mode on the Genesis is 
you know, in a perfect world, you could perfectly align it with 427.5. So you end up having to use either 427 or 428, and there's just no getting around it. Uh, you know, if the uh, OSSC had a 0.5 clock sample, we could perfectly align this. But because we can't, we just have to do the best we can. And it'll look pretty good, but on the left side of the screen, once we get this all set up, you'll notice some slight, you know, color ghosting on some edges. But other than that, it'll look pretty darn good. All right, so with that, uh, we'll go to sync length 31. We want to leave it that. Uh, we want to change the back porch to 53 because it's a little off center. There we go. Active 320, of course. Uh, vertical sync length 3, we want to leave that at that. Now this 14 for back porch is a couple of pixels too low, so we want to raise that to 16. And now that's perfectly centered, and we'll leave the active at 240. And then we're going to use post-processing to mask the top and bottom, just to make sure that no pixel garbage shows up on the screen in those overscan areas. So let's back out. Um, actually, let's see, I'm going to go back into sampling and sampling phase. That's right, I want to adjust this and get this perfectly lined up. And I believe for my particular console, 56 is as good as it's going to get. There we go. Now it looks nice and sharp and aligned. So now we're going to go out to post-processing. I'm going to go up to vertical mask and change that to 8 pixels. And that will block off the top and bottom. If you see, I'll go a little bit further, see how it's cutting into the screen. So let me go back to 8 pixels. And that perfectly masks off the overscan area on the top and the bottom. And that makes it so there's no flickering pixel garbage. I know uh, Fantasy Star 2 is a, a notoriously bad game for having pixel garbage down at the bottom of the screen like that. And this masking will take care of that. And it will maintain that nice... 1280 by 960 integer scale at 4x, you know, or whatever you prefer at 5x. It'll be a nice, more standardized, you know, integer scale based on 240 rather than 2, 224. All right, uh, let's see. Now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and save this profile since that's pretty much all there is to it for optimally timed uh, 250 or 320 by uh, 224. Uh, before I do actually save it, I just wanted to touch on one thing with the checkerboard pattern. You remember before my other videos, using this checkerboard pattern helps to dial in um, sampling phase. Uh, let me back out and go back to sampling phase. Let's say menu. Sampling options, sampling phase. Let's say I turn it up to say like 90 degrees. Oh, we lost signal there. Let's see if I can get it back. There we go. Um, there's a feature here where if I press the A button, it will do an alternating on and off, you know, e you know even and odd pixels of the checkerboard. And I actually found this uh, reveals even more of the noise. It's going to look kind of flickery here on the YouTube video, but this will reveal more of the noise and make for dialing in sampling phase much easier. So I'm going to keep lowering it and lowering it. See, there's still some noise there, still a little bit of noise, and at 56, no noise at all on either side. So let me go ahead and turn off that alternating, and now we're back to just a standard checkerboard pattern, and we'll back out of it. I just wanted to show you that because that's kind of a nifty little extra feature there. And one thing I kind of wish on this checkerboard pattern is that Artemio would add, in fact, maybe I'll message him about this, is add in a checkerboard pattern for each resolution mode. Like, that checkerboard pattern is based on 320 by 224. I would like to have one also for 256 by 224 in case you wanted to dial in optimal phase sampling for that as well. So that would be a cool feature for him to add in these, uh, in like a future revision of these uh, test suites. But at any rate, now that everything's perfectly uh, dialed in, we're gonna go ahead and save this profile.
so we don't lose all this work we did. It's actually under settings options. And we'll go to save, and we'll save it under number one. And now that that's done, let's see. Uh, we're going to go ahead and switch to dialing in 256 by 224 optimal. So let me go ahead and actually load in the OSSC menu my generic line 4x mode. There we are. I'll reset the Genesis. And <clears throat> let's see here. Go back to my res sorted. Go to a 256 game. We'll use Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Hyperstone Heist. That's a pretty good one there. And I'll actually be using the options screen to base my work on here. See, even that game had a little bit of graphics, you know, garbage at the bottom in the overscan area. All right, now that we're at the screen, we can start our work on dialing in optimal timing for 256 mode. So let's back out and go to video processing. Change that to 9 megahertz. I like to do the same thing, erasing the gain to 40-ish. There we go. That should do it for that. And then we'll check the sync option to make sure that's still at max, and it is. We'll just leave it like it is for that. And we're going to go to output options and go to our line 4x mode, which is on generic, and we want to change that to optimal for 256 by 240. And go down a little bit and make sure it's at 4.3, which it is. <clears throat> I prefer using 4.3 for these line 4x and line 5x modes. It's not quite perfect aspect correction, but it's better than square pixels for 256 mode. Square pixels typically don't look right for these games. It's only in the case of like, you know, like the Super Game Boy where you can match the, you know, aspect ratio of the original handheld using square pixels. But at any rate, back out and now we're going to go to sampling options. Go up to advanced timing, and let's see, we'll go all the way, we'll start with the uh, H sample rate, and 342 is going to be perfect for that. Sync length 25 is good. Back porch, I want to raise this to 40. And active 256, of course. We'll leave vertical sync length at 3. And here again, 14 is a little low. We'll change it to 16 to perfectly center it vertically. And leave the active at 240. And now we're going to back out to sampling phase. Let's go back in there and go to sampling phase. There it is. And I have actually found for my particular console that zero degrees is actually perfect sampling for 256 mode on uh, my setup. It may, it may not be for yours, but again, just dial it in until it looks good for your particular setup. <clears throat> and the last thing we're going to do is go ahead and do that vertical masking in post-processing. So we'll go up to vertical mask and raise that to 8 pixels, and if I you won't really be able to see it here. Well, you can see it at the top there going in. If I go past it, see that's too much. So 8 pixels. There we go. And that's it for optimal timing for uh, 256 mode. So let's go ahead and save this profile, which is down in the settings options. And we'll go to save, and we'll save it under profile number 2. And with that done, I'll go ahead and mute myself and raise the audio of this game, and I'll play like a few minutes of the first stage so you can get an idea of optimal timing for uh, 256 mode. So let me go ahead and raise the volume. And I'll go ahead and mute myself and we'll get this started.
All right, and that should give a pretty good demonstration of uh, 256 mode. All right, with that done, let's go ahead and move on to master system mode and get that set up for optimal timing. So I'm going to go ahead and reset the Genesis. <clears throat> and uh, go ahead on the OSSC, go ahead and load up my generic Line 4X profile. And then we'll go ahead and load up a um, Master System profile uh, game. Let's see, uh, we'll go with the Japanese Fantasy Star game. There we go. Um, go ahead and get the game started anyway, so we can get to the uh, actual screen that we can use. I'll go in this cave and that'll be a good uh, place to actually dial in optimal timing as well as perfect masking. Now, <clears throat> uh, Master System Mode uses a resolution of 256 by 192, so this is going to have a large amount of color overscan. Uh, this is going to be a great test of the masking feature with the OSSC, uh, as we should be able to use it to effectively block in the 256 by 192 active graphics area. Um, there's going to be a couple of screens in Fantasy Star here where you'll still see like a left side sort of uh, overscan blanked out area and that's just a uh, scroll buffer that they added in software wise so that it can scroll without seeing junk being loaded into memory uh, but that is actually part of the active graphics area so we need to leave that intact and this makes for a simple single profile that you need for our master system. With that said, we'll go ahead and start with the usual on the OSSC. And go down to, let's see, get out of there, there we are. Nine megahertz as usual. Do my same thing of 40. And we'll check sync option. Let's go back there. Make sure that's at max it is and leave it at, the, at that, of course. And we're going to go down to output options. Check my line 4x mode. See it's at generic and we want 256 by 240 again. And make sure that it is in 43 and it is. And we'll go back up to sampling options. Go to advanced timing uh, for 256 by 240, and we'll move all the way back up to uh, sample rate. There we are. And once again, we want 342 for that. Sync link, we leave at 25. Back porch, move up to 40. Edge active, 256. Vertical sync link, 3. And here again, the back porch is a little too low at 14, so I raise it to 16, and that will perfectly center it. 240 active, now we back out. And once again, sampling phase of zero gives me the best possible picture. I'm gonna load all the way down to zero, and there it is, nice and clean. That's as good as it's gonna get. And we'll back out of that and go down to post-processing and go to our mask, vertical mask, there's vertical. Now instead of eight, since it's a 192 vertical resolution, we have to raise this all the way to 24. And as you can see, I start to increase it. You can see that masking coming into view there, blocking it off. Just keep going all the way to 24. There's 23 and 24 and this perfectly blocks off the active graphics area. 
With that done, this profile is finished, so we'll go ahead and save it. Settings, save, and we'll save it as profile number three. And once again, I'll mute myself just so you can hear the sound, and I'll play you know, a couple of minutes of the game just so you can get an idea. So let me go ahead and mute myself, and I'll raise the sound of the game. All right, with that done, that uh, wraps up this video for all three modes of the Genesis. Uh, hope it was informative and a good demonstration of my line level audio board. Although, again, it's YouTube video, so it's not going to be as great as my flag download files for comparison. But uh, thanks for so much for watching. And once again, the Patreon link is down in the video description. And uh, much appreciated for anyone who pledges. It greatly helps on... Uh, getting more content like this out to you. So thanks so much, everybody, and catch you later.